Hello and welcome to the Mighty Oaks Show. My name is Jeremy Stallnecker. I'm the Executive Director of the Mighty Oaks Foundation. Glad you could join us today. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, an issue or discuss a topic that is very important to us as an organization and I think shed some light on um, uh, really a strange cultural phenomenon <laughs> that we're kind of dealing with in America. Uh, but before I get to that, if you are watching on YouTube and you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please do that. Go ahead and subscribe. Also hit the notification bell. That lets you know when new episodes of the show and a lot of other content comes online. And we'd love to share that with you. If you're listening somewhere else, uh, and there's some great places to listen to this show, take some time, jump on YouTube. A lot of content there, of course, but find The Mighty Oaks Show, and uh, you can subscribe as well and uh, get this show and so many other things that we, we are able to put on our page. We have uh, interviews from a lot of the folks who have been through our organization, other friends of our organization, and people that we uh, have the privilege of knowing, and I would encourage you to stop by there and check that out. So in America today, we have some strange conversations that are happening all of the time, and uh, I'm sure that's not uh, a mystery to anyone that's watching or, <laughs> or listening. One of the, the conversations that's happening is around the issue of gender and gender identity and uh, the difference between men and women and where those lines cross and so much of what we're talking about is that in-between area. Um, a lot of people would like to remove any kind of gender identity, remove the differences between men and women and uh, all, all of these things, you've heard these and you've talked about them and it is not my goal today to fix that. Uh, but I do want to talk about something that's important to us as an organization and I think very important to people that want to see healing happen after trauma to deal with many of life's issues in a way that's healthy and helpful and hopeful. And it, it, it's, it's something that for us, again, organizationally has been a key to a lot of the success that we've had. Mighty Oaks Foundation, if you follow us, you, you know this, we exist to serve veterans, active duty service members, and first responders and their families. We have spouses of those uh, different categories that would also be involved in our programs. Uh, we serve them by having uh, kind of two, two lanes, I guess, that we serve. Uh, one is our week-long programs that take place all over the country, and uh, those happen uh, almost 30 times a year, always something going on. We bring folks to one of our facilities. We spend a week dealing with these issues and uh, doing our best to help uh, navigate many of, the life, many of life's problems and many of the issues that we face in life. Some uh, are related to trauma, whether it's combat trauma or, com or trauma because of other service. And, and so we deal with these issues, and again, spouses are dealing with uh, the one who has the issues sometimes, and that creates other issues. So we're dealing with these things. Uh, on the other side, we deal with what we call resiliency. That is, making decisions ahead of time that will allow you to experience difficulty, as we all will, but in experiencing that difficulty, have a way to align your life back to a point, to, to come back, to recalibrate to something that will carry you forward. That's resiliency. It's making the decision ahead of time. In our week-long programs, we deal with a lot of very important, very personal, very difficult things. A decision that we made, I was going to say one of the decisions, and it's one of them, but a decision that we made in the very beginning was that we would segregate our program. And this is where the conversation gets real for some people, right? We segregate our programs. We have men's programs and we have women's programs. Uh, when a program happens for men, all of the attendees are men, all of the instructors are men. It's a men's program. It's men dealing with their issues as men. We have our women's programs. In fact, as we're recording this, there's a women's program going on right now here in California. Uh, we have our women's programs. Again, uh, all of the students are women. All of those who are facilitating and teaching in that program are women, and we're dealing with many of these issues in a segregated way. And it's funny because as we started the program uh, a number of years ago, this was something that made sense to folks. This was not hard to understand. <laughs> but as the cultural conversation has changed, and, and so much of what we do intersects with culture, um, as a cultural conversation has changed around gender roles and gender identity and those things, more and more and more people have asked us, why do you segregate your program? Um, some people will, will even take issue with that and they'll say something like this, don't you think that men and women have many of the same problems? Don't you think that women who have served in the military are dealing with the same things as men? Don't you think the path forward is the same? And uh, again, this has been a conversation that we just haven't had in the past. And, and I wanna explain to you why we do it the way that we do it. And then hopefully, 
give you some things that can help you to understand this in a way that can be helpful in your own environment, whatever that is, because we know that, that people struggle in, in a lot of different ways in a lot of different places. Um, the path forward is the same, so I'll start there. The path to healing, the path to uh, moving beyond trauma and moving beyond difficulty and those things, it is the same. It's understanding that we were created, that there is a purpose for our lives, that there is hope even though we feel hopeless. It's having someone help us to gain a proper perspective of what we're going through and the path forward and, and how best to navigate the, the things that would keep us from moving forward. It's, it's looking to the future. It's understanding some things will need to change, then changing those things so that we can align to the person that we were created to be. When we are in line with or moving toward the person we were created to be, the traumas, the issues, the other things that have control of us, they lose their power and they lose their control because we're not allowing them to define us or to identify us. And that's what we work towards in our program. People ask, uh, what do you guys do? You deal with trauma and you're a post-traumatic stress program and, and you deal with PTSD and we do, we deal with all of those things. But specifically what we do is we acknowledge that there is a problem, there has been a trauma or a difficulty or a struggle in life related to uh, maybe just living, but it could also be related to the bad decisions of a spouse, it could be related to combat service or military service or service in, in the law enforcement or the first responder community. It, it comes from a lot of different places, but we acknowledge that there are problems and trials and difficulties and these things often have very real physiological impacts and re very real psychological and emotional impacts but that they don't need to define us or keep us from moving forward. So we acknowledge the problem. We acknowledge the things that aren't going to change. You won't forget about those things or simply get over them, right? Um, there are things you'll have to deal with. But then we chart a course forward, understanding that the, the goal is to move beyond whatever's happened to us. And we start to do that. But I'll tell you a very important key to all of that. And a very, very important key to all of that is transparency. It's personal transparency. It's the individual, the student, the person who's going through our course of instruction, being honest enough with themselves to acknowledge there is a problem and I can't deal with it on my own. They're being transparent, honest with themselves. But then beyond that, understanding they're now in a group of people who have struggled with many of the same things. And isn't this one of the struggles we all have? Uh, we deal with what we deal with, and we look around and say, no one knows what it's like to be me. No one's ever experienced that. And when we say that or think that, it causes us to, to draw inward, <laughs> to come into ourselves and say, well, since no one else has experienced this, uh, I'm just going to hang on to it myself. And that's, that's not a healthy way to respond to any of this. In order to move forward, we have to be honest with ourselves, transparent with ourselves. I have a problem, and I can't deal with that problem on my own. And then you find yourself in an environment, and this is the environment we create through our programs. You find yourself in an environment with other people, like-minded people, who have had some of the same struggles, but are working to move forward as well. The instructors in our program, we call them instructors because that's language everyone understands, but uh, probably more specifically, they're guides. They're people who say, look, I've been where you've been. I've, I've experienced the same things you've experienced. I've found how to move forward. I've figured some of this out. I don't have it all figured out, but I want to help you move forward too. They're guides helping you to get to the place you need to be. So transparency is being honest with yourself, but then it's looking around and understanding I'm in a safe place with people that understand what I'm going through, that have some of the same thoughts and feelings and experiences I do, and then being transparent enough, and get this, this is what we don't do very well in America, <laughs> being transparent enough to acknowledge to other people that you're struggling with some things, that you cannot deal with on your own. Now in the veteran community, in the first responder community, this is the issue. The issue is acknowledging that there's a problem and then reaching outside of yourself to get help. We talk about this often. So you need to be in an environment where you feel safe and you feel comfortable and you feel uh, like you can share what's going on on the inside so that the guides and the other people that are there can help you navigate your way forward. Very, very simple concept, and everyone understanding, uh, everyone listening understands uh, what I just described. But here's what happens if you're in an integrated, and by integrated, I mean gender integrated, men and women together. If you're in a session, a setting, where men and women are together, here's what goes away first. Transparency. 
Uh, why? Because we're created different. We're created to respond to situations differently. And men and women in the same space will respond to each other differently uh, than they would if they were not in an integrated space. When we put men together, what we find is that men, their brains are wired the same way, they deal with things in the same way, they process emotion and experiences the same way, and they find that they're in a safe place where they can express these things without holding back because of other people that are listening, because their spouse is listening, or, or other uh, women who may not understand exactly where they're coming from uh, are listening. And they're able to freely express who they are because they're in a safe environment with other like-minded people. Again, it's a very simple concept. Likewise, in the women's program, we understand that men and women are not wired the same. And, and, and people can scream about this as much as they want to and say that we're all exactly the same. <laughs> we know we're not exactly the same, right? Uh, biologically, we're not the same. Emotionally, we're not the same. Uh, how we process and deal with things, it's not the same. Uh, God created us different for a reason. God created us to complement one another and to uh, make each other better. We're two sides of the same coin, perhaps, and better together. Um, we, we understand we're not the same. Now, we're equal on the side of God and, and, and all of those things, but we were created differently. And so we respond differently and we process differently. And women who are in a setting with other women understand where each other is coming from. And they're able to be transparent, that key to healing. They're able to be honest with what they've experienced and, and what they've seen and what they've felt and how they're processing. Uh, I'm married. I've been married for 21 years. I love my wife. <laughs> um, I really love my wife. I, I, I often say this, and I'm not kidding. Uh, why she ever married me and why she stuck with me, I have no idea. I'm thankful she did both of those things, but I don't understand it all, right? Um, but anyone who's married understands the differences in how men and women process things. Uh, my wife will experience the exact same thing I do at the exact same time, and our responses will be completely different. And I, as her husband, who know her pretty well, we've been, we've been together for a long time, I can look at her and have no idea why she's responding the way she is, why she's dealing with it the way that she is, why she's uh, feeling the way she is. It just doesn't make sense to me. And she knows that, and sometimes that creates friction because she won't respond the way that she should because she knows how I'll respond watching her deal with that. And it's the same the other way around. She sees the way I deal with things, and it just doesn't make sense. So when we segregate our program, there's men's programs and there's women's programs, it gives each the opportunity to be in an environment where they're around other like-minded people who understand the processing mechanisms and are able to support them through what's happened and help them chart the course forward. It makes perfect sense. Now, the struggle is that, again, culturally the conversation is changing, and as the culture changes the conversation and changes the language around these things, it, in a lot of ways, degrades our ability to really meet people where they are and to deal with the issues they're experiencing right now to help them move forward. And, and I want to say this, and, and I hope that folks listening understand this. Don't allow a shifting culture to remove your ability to get the help that you need or the ability to process things the way they need to be processed so that you can move forward. Uh, I understand that veterans are not the only ones who deal with trauma or deal with the difficulties of life. I, I fully understand that. I get that. Uh, in fact, 70% of Americans will deal with some kind of traumatic event at some point in their life. I, I think that statistics are interesting because most of us would say 100% of Americans will deal with some trauma. Uh, but the point is, whether it's 70% or 100%, that all of us will deal with a traumatic event at some point in our lives. All of us deal with the struggles and the difficulties of life. And, and in that process, we need to get help. We need to be honest enough with ourselves to acknowledge, I can't deal with this on my own. And then we need to look outside of ourselves for that help and then find ourselves in an environment. Maybe it's not a Mighty Oaks program, but maybe it's a group of friends. An environment where we feel safe enough to be honest with those around us so that they can help us move forward. And when we talk about having a men's program and having a women's program in the way that we're organized, it's to create that environment for help, hope, and healing. And we believe it's the right one, but for you, what I would like to communicate to anyone who's dealing with uh, a trauma in their life or a struggle or difficulty is don't let culture or the cultural narrative determine how you get help. 
There is hope. There is help. There is purpose. But you need to find that. Uh, get your arms around it <laughs> and move forward. And you can. I hope that's a help to you today. Thank you for watching. It's always a privilege to be able to spend some time with you. And again, if you have not yet subscribed, uh, subscribe. And hit that uh, notification bell. That lets you know when new episodes come online. And we will see you next time.